Hello, I'm Robert Scoble, and you're watching Work Fast TV, which is about how the internet is changing work. This show is supported through the generous support of SAP. SAP provides software that helps both large and small businesses manage their business, lower costs, and bring more services to their business relationship partners. Thank you to SAP for supporting social media and this show. My guest today is Vajnu uh, Ragesna, evangelist at Zoho. Zoho makes tons of Office 2.0 services, so we'll talk about those and the trends he's seeing from the million customers that Zoho has signed up. Raju, uh, welcome to WorkFest. Thank you. It's great having you on the show because the show really was designed with you, with <laughs> Zoho in mind. I, I remember coming to Pleasanton in your offices and seeing what you were doing. What that was almost uh, a year and a half ago or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And, and uh, I've been watching you spit out new service after new service, and these are all internet-based services that are collaborative. Right? Exactly. And uh, <clears throat> there are. There are quite a few applications that we have launched. Now we have about 18 applications, including the one that we launched yesterday. So What did you announce yesterday? <laughs> <that? laughs> you, you've done so many, I, keep, I lose track now. Yeah. We launched an application called Zoho Share. Okay. It's a kind of a SharePoint and YouTube combined. So <laughs> well, we'll have to get a look at that later on. Um, Tell me, because you have 17 services, a lot of them seem aimed directly at Microsoft, and that's what I, I love about you guys, that you're, you're uh, trying to disrupt and, and change the, uh, the office market mm -hmm. be, because of the internet. That's what this yes. show is all about, is well, how the internet is changing work, and you're directly right in the middle of that. Instead of saying all our applications are targeted towards Microsoft, Microsoft I would say they are really targeted towards the businesses. So the focus is really the business users. Yeah. So we have two categories of applications. One focused on productivity and collaboration. There you'll see applications like Office Suite, email, calendaring, and others. The second category is a set of business applications. These include applications like CRM, project management, web conferencing, database applications, so quite a few. So these are the two primary categories where we fill in. Yeah. What are you, so last time I saw you, you had a small little data center. We were actually <laughs> in your data center, which is, yes. is it was funny because that, that data center was surrounded by Google uh, d data centers. <laughs> um, but now you have a thousand machines, now I guess. Now we have about close to a thousand servers uh, wow. in, in two different locations. Now we moved on to a next level data center, which is pretty good, very good connectivity. Now we are no longer buying individual servers or five ten servers. We are buying racks of servers, which come with around 80 servers per rack. So we are buying more racks now. And we also added a new data center in New York uh, that acts as a disaster recovery. So even if uh, the California data center goes down for whatever reason, the New York center takes over. Yeah. When I visited you, you, you really laid out um, how you're able to do so many apps because you have a really innovative business model back in India, right? Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about where Zoho came from and, and why you guys got into the productivity suite business uh, from well, where you were. You should look at the, the history of, of the uh, pr company itself, AdventNet. AdventNet is the parent company. Uh, we initially started with providing offering APIs for uh, developers on the network management side. Then we started building some infrastructure products, kind of like uh, I would say uh, WebLogic or any of the other J2E servers, but in the network management space. Then we, we started offering end user products. So the next evolution work for us is to go with SaaS. And uh, back in 2003 when the telecom bubble burst, that was our primary market then, we decided to expand to different areas. And the productivity collaboration happened to be one, email is one, and then CRM is one. And all the three came together for the Zoho brand. Yeah. Now you guys do what, 17 different apps? 18 uh, now. 18, yes, yes. that's crazy. And give me a sense of what those apps do. Let's say the top four or five. Sure. Yeah. On the uh, productivity and collaboration side, the, the top apps are our office suite, obviously. The word processor, spreadsheet, and presentation application. Yeah. Those are obviously uh, most used applications. And the primary is the primary functionality of these is obviously it offers the, the functionalities of say, the regular office application. But the advantage is because it's hosted online, you can access it anywhere. So the mobility comes in really handy. Yeah. And then the collaboration is the key aspect of these web-based applications. So both of us can work on the same document at the same time, document, spreadsheet, presentation, while seeing each other's changes real time. Yeah, so and that's real impressive. And that that's 
what I really like about the new world and why this show exists, where it, most people I see working on planes and stuff like that have Microsoft Office, and sometimes not even, the, in fact, often it's not even the latest version. It's mm -hmm. uh, Office 2000 or Office 2003, and they have no clue about how, you know, that there's this new world of collaborative exactly. uh, documents where I could be typing and you can be typing or editing at the same time, and we can see each other's changes. That really changes a lot of yeah, stuff. That avoids the burden of having to email attachments and keep track of who has the latest version, all of that. And if you're online, everyone is on the same page. In this case, it's a web page or, or the web document. And that changes a lot. So you can go back to any any version that you want because you have a single copy on our data center. Yeah. And that's the best part. So the collaboration applications, or the productivity and collaboration applications include these three applications, which have been really good. On the business application side, our CRM has been really good to us. So yeah. we, we, it's again, it's different from the regular CRM applications, which are kind of bloated, both on the price side and also the feature set. And here, I think we hit the right, uh, right point. So we offer it for free for the for the first three users, and from the fourth user, we start at twelve dollars a user a, a month, and that's ten percent cheaper than, or I would say, ninety percent cheaper than the closest competition out there. Yeah. So the price angle, because the, the target audience is really businesses, especially small and big, medium businesses, I think that really fits in well. And especially these uh, the online applications are very attractive to people who cannot afford 90% on board. Yep. If you take a doctor's office or a lawyer's office, they really, they really don't have a 90% on board. And the online applications are ideal for such people. They just come sign up, they pay a monthly fee, like the way you pay your, uh, say, monthly electricity bill or, or you know, the utility bills. Yeah. And it is going the, that direction. How many of your, cus uh, what percentage of your customers actually move from the free version into a paid version? We see about a six month lag between the move to paid but uh, a good set of good percentage moves to the free to the paid. Now note that for the productivity applications, we haven't had a price tag. Yeah. We are still coming up with a Zoho business that packages all the applications together. That will have a price tag soon. But for other business applications like CRM people, which is a HR application and project management, for those we do have a price tag. And we see a certain delay, but they do convert to paid apps because they see value when, when they get started and they expand on it and they start running uh, their business on it. And another thing is because we have a wide array of applications, they start with one application, they move on to the other as they are integrated and they see value in other applications as well. Yeah, interesting. Do you have any mobile services? We Obviously, have, we probably work on iPhone because it has a web browser that works with yes, web Yes, we web have, in, in fact, uh, optimized the applications for the iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be uh, ro rolling out support for other uh, mobile devices as well, in some cases through partners, but we think iPhone really defines what the next generation phones are going to be. Yeah. So there is going to be certain focus on iPhone immediately, but then we'll support other mobile devices as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, what don't, what don't your apps do? I mean, let's talk about word processing. You know, if I was comparing it to Microsoft Word, sure. why would I need to go back to Microsoft Word and still use Microsoft Word? Is there anything that your apps don't do that the, old, the older suites do do? Well, there are certain sets, some advanced functionalities, but it's just a matter of time. I would say at this point there are probably 10 or 20 percent very advanced functionalities that we don't do. Yeah. And which like what, ma uh, mail merging kind of stuff? Yes, or? yeah, kind of like that, like mail merging. But once Zoho Mail is out, and there you'll see some... some uh, Did you some just announce another product? <laughs> 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 well, it's in private beta. Once it rolls out to public, you'll see a few functionalities there. Wow. When even the, the gap between the functionalities available in Microsoft Office and Zoho applications is, de is decreasing, decreasing. The best example is the one, the, the, the announcement that came in last week is from Zoho Sheet. We support recording and playback of VB macros. Ah. So earlier we announced the support for macros, so which means if you have an existing macro written in Visual Basic, we do understand Visual Basic and we execute them in Zoho Sheet. Last, week, uh, last week's announcement uh, supports recording and playback, which means you can record your whatever actions you're doing, we record it and we automatically build the VB code for you and once you stop recording, you can apply that VB macros to any of your spreadsheets. Wow. So as you see, the, the gap between 
the functionality is really decreasing and we truly believe that online applications can offer all the functionalities of the web based I mean of the offnel alternatives but they can go beyond it because of the nature of these applications they are online the mobility collaboration and there are lots of other things it's, it's easy to integrate these applications as well yeah give me a sense of something that that you guys do that that the other suites don't do I mean take it's just a, merging between all of these applications, say Zoho Sheet, Macros is one example. Or, as I said, we have two categories. One is a productivity category and the other one is business category. In fact, there are not many vendors, if there are any, that provide both. There is no one vendor who has a CRM and a HR application and a web conferencing application and office suite and email together. Yeah. Now, when these two are off, are available from the same vendor, the integration possibilities are enormous. Let me give you an example. Or CRM, you have a way to look at all your contacts in a central place. But editing a contact in, in that view, in the regular data, uh, form based view, is a, to some extent it's a pain. But editing a similar content on a spreadsheet is much easier. So what we did is we took the spreadsheet interface and stuck it on top of our CRM application. So which means you can edit your contacts in your CRM application as a spreadsheet, but when you save them, they are saved to the relational database at the back end. So you get the ease of use of a spreadsheet and also the power of a relational database at the back end. Interesting. So there is no such integration that, that was done earlier. And so, I mean, because we offer a wide, wide variety of applications, some of these integrations are really possible. Yeah. What are you guys learning from doing these apps? What, what, what's the customer feedback and what are they telling you that they like or, or want? Well, <laughs> what are you seeing from where you're sit, sit, sitting? Well, they clearly want more. <laughs> yeah. So they want more apps from us. <clears throat> they they really are asking us to enhance the applications. Uh, they want more functionality in the applications, and uh, it's an integration between these applications. <clears throat> and yeah. as you notice, I mean, in the last three months, three to four months, we didn't really release any application. That's primarily because the focus has been on integrating the existing applications and making sure they work through well. In fact, the application that was launched yesterday was also an integration application that integrates a writer sheet and show and positions it to the front at the end user. And uh, so integration has been the focus. And one of the requests has been to extend our applications to other areas as well. That has been another uh, most requested function. Like, like what kinds of areas? Well, uh, maybe offering different applications for, say, different departments, different segments of the market. Got it. Um, I, I, if I talked with some of the uh, Microsoft Office users, I bet some of the objections might be, I'm used to Microsoft Office. Sure. I, I've spent 15 years using it, I know what it looks like, I know where the features are, I know all that stuff. And uh, so have you patterned your apps after Microsoft Office to make it easy to move from uh, Office into an online app? Or? Well, not really. Uh, we really took the very basic approach. We wanted to optimize the applications for the web, and that's what we have done. Yeah. I mean, the bold icon looks like the bold icon in both Microsoft or, or Zoho or any of these. So some of these things are the same. but. Uh, I think people who are use it eventually get com comfortable with it. For example, when you got your first mobile phone, I mean, you didn't say that you are used to the regular phone. You are willing to try it because it offers a good set of functionality, like you have it anywhere you go. Yeah. That's the same experience we find it here, even with the mobile applications or with our web-based applications. They are willing to try, and they are getting comfortable with these, and that was not an issue. And for those who are not comfortable with it, we offer a plugin for Microsoft Office as well, okay. which means you still can work on your applications in Microsoft Office, but you can save a cop copy of them in on Zoho within with a, within Microsoft Office. Okay. So when you are on the go, when you don't have access to your system, you can always log into Zoho and access your application or your files right there. Right. Another uh, uh, objection I would I would think is, uh, well, with Microsoft Office, everything's on my on my laptop on sure. my hard drive, and I. I know where that is. Sure. I know how to back it up, I, and I know that you know. I know where that is. Right? Like, where, if I'm working on a server somewhere, what happens if Zoho, you know, God forbid, goes out sure. of business, or if you didn't back up the server, or yeah. something like that? Uh, we don't know how good you are at. <laughs> at I know how good you are because yes. I've been in your data center. Yes. But normal people are like, 
I don't. I still don't trust saving my data on a server thing that from a company I haven't heard of before and stuff like that. Well, again, it's like saving your money in your matrix versus uh, saving it in the bank. So yeah. that's the initial trust factor. It's always safe to. Uh, we can safe to basically save the documents online, primarily because I mean, how many of us really back up our data uh, yeah. on, on the system? But on the other hand, we basically, if it is online, we take care of it. In fact, we back up our data regularly and in fact uh, we are also will be we will be synchronizing the data uh, real time between our San Jose data center or Sunnyvale data center and the New York data center right and there are multiple copies sitting and we have sitting locally and in a different location so we basically back up your data very regularly and it's simple if you lose your data we are out of business so it's such such an important thing for us to make sure that your data is secure and all yeah so we really take take security really seriously but then uh, how often do you really take a backup of your uh, laptop right so it's safer that your do document or uh, your content exists in a place who where uh, professionals really are managing the data centers and protecting your data yeah so yeah. we have we have teams sitting uh, 24 by 7 monitoring the security aspects and the, and the reliability aspects, the backup, the content is there, all of that uh, every day as we speak. Yeah, another, uh, the third objection is probably the plane scenario. You know, I'm in a plane, I don't have connectivity to the internet, how can I get access to all my well, important staff <laughs> in the plane? Just yeah. yesterday, American Airlines announced that they are offering Wi-Fi on the plane. Well, that's one well, solution. That's <laughs> one solution. <laughs> but we do have an offline solution. Uh, for example, Zoho Writer currently is now available offline. So if you don't have connectivity, well, you can access still access the same application while you're not connected to the internet. Yeah. That is based on Google's Gears technology. You install a small plugin on your browser, and you can access all your documents locally, make changes. And we, when you're back connected, basically synchronize all your data. So that's one application. Now we, run, we are in the process of extending that to other applications as well. Very cool. And your business model, do you do any advertising or is it just uh, premium where, where no. I get a free version and then a, a, a more we, expensive? We uh, don't do any advertising. We don't believe in advertising. It's like okay. th they don't really merge well. Productivity applications and advertising, they don't really merge well. So we don't believe in that and we don't plan to offer advertising, uh, uh, provide advertising in that. We do have, uh, I mean, all our applications are free for individuals, mm -hmm. and for businesses, they have, uh, there's a price tag. Yeah. For example, if you take our business suite, our Zoho business, that's an that's a integration of all the Zoho applications under a single umbrella, that is free, say, for the first 10 users in an organization. So if you are a, a company with less than 10 users, you can use Zoho applications for free. Only from the 11th user, we charge about $50 a user a year. Yeah. So, so let, and that is for the productivity and collaboration apps. And we have separate price tags for each of the other business applications as well. Yeah. How do you see the uh, competitive space uh, playing out? Google obviously has docs and spreadsheets and, and does something similar to what you're doing in terms of docs and spreadsheets. And Adobe has uh, Buzzword and uh, Acrobat Online now. How, how do you think this is going to play out? Because you guys are doing clearly a, a yes. much broader suite than either of those companies are. Uh, but they have brand names that people recognize, sure. right? Well, uh, if you look at Google, there is about 40% overlap between what Google does and what Zoho does. And even in Google, they believe in, I, I guess, simplistic applications. So, so you will not see macro functionality or the business focus functionality that we offer. So the focus has been, to some extent, Google on the consumers and we on the businesses. Uh, that's that's been our focus right from the day one. So we have been offering business applications and the functionalities, the deep deeper functionalities that businesses need in the individual applications. So the difference between Google and Zoho is the breadth and the depth. So if you look at the breadth of applications, we offer 60% more applications than Google. And if even if you look at the depth of the each application that we offer, we have at least 20 to 30% more depth than what they offer. And with Adobe, well, there's only just 10 to 20 percent overlap, so uh, so they just have a, a word processor there. So I'm looking forward to, to more applications there yeah. in this space. When are you guys going to sell out to one of these big companies? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's definitely not the plan. But again, you should never say never in business. So, <laughs> <laughs> so can we see a couple of sure. apps and, and get a sense of what Zoho looks like? Because I'm sure a lot of my viewers haven't seen. Uh, Maybe you haven't even seen an online office suite, right? We have a lot of people. <laughs> That's true. 
So let me take one example here, like Zoho Writer. So yeah. on the on the the ones on the left are the productivity and collaboration apps, and the ones on the right are business applications. Let's pick Zoho Writer for example, which is our word processor application. So when you log into say Zoho Writer application, you'll see the list of applications, list of documents on the left, yeah. and you see the editor on the right. If you prefer a full screen editor, you can maximize that as well. Yep. You give it a name and start writing the content. Now you have all the basic functionalities that you would expect, defining the fonts, aligning it. And now do you do things like tables as well? We do, we do tables, so you can define tables here as well. You can say insert table and uh, huh. uh, just specify the number of cells and rows. Okay. You also can, uh, you also have other options, uh, for example, so there are some unique functionalities that we also bring in. Uh, for example, comments or pagination. These are not available in, in other uh, online applications, online word processors. So if you look at the page view, so this is basically the pagination of your document. So where, where the page breaks and all of that. In this case, I just have one document. But if you have multiple, mul if you have multiple pages, then you'll see that. Now, the key functionality of this uh, particular doc, this online applications are sharing. So you can share this application, sh share this document, with either individuals or with groups. Yeah. So I can give read-only read-only permissions or read-write permissions to the users I am sharing this with. And while, or I can share it with a group. So these are some of the groups that are present in my organization, and I can give read-write access to specific groups and read-only access to specific groups. Right. Now, can I see revision history? Yes. So that, <coughs> let's say I send, uh, I'm working on a document with Rocky, and he screws it up. So can I go back to the yes. version I liked? Or? So history is 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 an important feature here. You can look at the history of this particular document. Yeah. And you you can look at all the changes that were done. So you can go to 1.1 version. This is the only thing that, that existed in 1.1. And you'll see the username beside it. In this case, I was the only one working on this document. Yep. But if you have multiple people working on the document, you'll see their usernames here. Can you compare uh, yes. two versions of the yes. document? Yes, so you can go to, say, 1.1 and maybe 1.5, and you can say, show difference. And it'll highlight the changes that were done between those two versions. That's really nice. And uh, yeah, this is very straightforward. And compared to, say, even the other in Microsoft, the low offline version, Microsoft Word, where it is, it's not really very straightforward there to merge versions. That's one of the pain points there. Yeah, and can I uh, can I save as a Word document? So I might work for a book publisher who who requires me to send them a Word doc, and they don't want to deal with exactly. online. Exactly, you can do that. You can export it. So you have we have an export option to Word document. Yeah. We, we also support DocX. This is the 2007 Word document format. Yep. And we also support ODF, PDF. You can export it as a PDF. We also support latex and other formats as well. Wow. Or if you want to email it, we directly have an email option uh, and specify the email address of the other user and s tell which format you want to send it out. So if you want to send it out as a, as a PDF version, just specify the email address and it will go in as an attachment. Wow. Really crazy. <laughs> you guys have have improved it a lot over the last uh, last year. It did, and in fact, there are uh, quite uh, other functionalities. <clears throat> the Go Offline lets you work offline as well, and there are others like comments. You can add comments to this. We have also added now comments. I could put what comments off yes. to the side, so yes. I could say, "Hey, Rocky, you need to work on this paragraph." Or exactly. Okay. And you, from the comment, you can make it a discussion. So you can say something, Rocky can say something, and I can say something, and based on that, you can make the changes. Got it. And similarly, we added functionalities like endnotes, footnotes. These are uh, some of the common functionalities that uh, people request. Yep. And other things. For academic types. Exactly. Of and other things like headers, footers. You can define the headers and footers for your documents. And equation editors is another uh, recent thing, especially for uh, academic use. So it's tough to write complex equations like these normally. You have to know the latex syntax for that. Yeah. Here we give you all the different symbols. You can select what you want and, and basically build your equation and click on insert that inserts the equation right here. Wow. And you can right click and say edit the equation to edit it further. What about uh, different languages? Because I, I know uh, you know you're used all over the world and it, for instance my <coughs> wife is Farsi and she writes Farsi notes to people. Sure. The, can you handle those kinds yes. of different languages? Uh, we do handle, at the editor level, yes, we do handle multiple languages. <coughs> and in fact, if you look at, and even the spell check and other things, we offer spell check in 43 different languages. So you'll see the spell check uh, here, 
and you can ask it to do a spell check in any specific language that you would like. Wow. <coughs> we support spell check in 43 different languages and also you can do thesaurus. We also support thesaurus in 11 different languages. You can do a lookup and, <coughs> and do a thesaurus. And the whole application itself is available in different languages. So you can go to the language settings and the application uh, itself is available in different languages. So the spell check, you can specify the default. Yeah. And for some of these applications, we have been doing some <coughs> interesting uh, integration. Uh, for example, we have a spreadsheet where we can let users do their own translation. Yeah. <coughs> for example, here is a, there are about 52 languages that this have, this application is being translated in. Yeah. For example, you want if if you know German or any Italian, let's say you want to edit this particular look at the the translated application. This is how it looks. Yeah. Let's say this is not what you want for a save. You want to edit it. Click on the edit button and specify your German equivalent of of this particular text, and that will basically change it. So it's like you customizing your application for your needs, wow. for, the, for the language you want. Now, how good is the uh, sharing control? For instance, um, if I work in a large corporation, I might only want my work group to see it, I might only want my boss to see it, um, or you know, tell me a little bit about how I can set up a group to do that. So we have uh, the group section in an organization. If it is an organization uh, using Zoho applications, you can set up a group, like maybe you can set up a group with your boss, or you can set up a, a group for uh, marketing department, sales department, or something like that. When you share a document with the department, it will be shared to all the members in that department. Yeah. Or if you just wanted to share it with an individual person, you can do that directly as well to that individual, giving his username or an email address. That will directly share with the users. In that case, you are sharing the entire document. But there are applications in our case, like, uh, like Zoho Notebook, where you can even go to the content level, which means I can decide to share this paragraph alone with you, and I, I can hide the other paragraphs with you. Wow. So it, the sharing goes all the way to the paragraph level. Or I can say, I want to share this page with you but with read-only mode, but I let you edit only one paragraph. So one paragraph can be in read-write mode, while the complete document itself can be in read-only mode. Wow. That's so crazy. It goes all the way deep, yes. It's crazy. Go back to the screen where we see all the apps. Yes. And, uh, so what, what kinds, give me five apps that people might u use in their everyday work. The word five first apps that they should try if, well, they're, if they're using it for office use. Zoho Business is what I would, uh, I would recommend because that covers all the apps. All right. <laughs> so Zoho Business is, is the application that includes all our applications. This is essentially a combination of, of all the apps here. So you'll see all the apps that you need on a daily basis. You have your email, you have your calendar, you have your document management, which is you see all your documents. Wow. You have your task management. You have your word processor, spreadsheet, presentation, everything integrated. So if you were to start, you'll start here. And you'll, you have all the applications that you need. It's not just these apps. You have other applications as well, like database, web conferencing, and all of that. For programmers, you, ha you have a lot of depth in here as well, because you have the macro language, which lets you uh, record things. Yes. Uh, but you have a full macro language that you could write scripts and stuff like that. That so. is for that is for uh, Zoho Sheet, and one of my favorite application is Zoho Creator. Okay. That lets you create applications, and it also comes with a simple scripting language called Deluge. Simple but very powerful scripting language called Deluge. So you can simply create applications here. For example, you might have a website or or a blog form. You might want to create a, a simple form there. You can just give it a name, define whether it is public or private, and say create it. That will create a new application, and you can drag fields that you want. For example, you want to take the name of the user who is entering yeah. the comments, just I, drag it. We're going to have to come back sure. and get a whole look at just that, because sure. <laughs> we're running out of time. Sure. It's been amazing how half an hour goes so fast. So. Yeah. Um, so thanks, uh, everybody, for joining us. Next week's guest is Rebe Rebecca Jacoby, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer of Cisco. Her extensive understanding of business operations helps her advance Cisco's business through the use of Cisco technologies. Uh, so thanks for w watching. We're not live this week. Uh, we'll be live again next week. So there won't be a chat after this show. Uh, but uh, join us again next week at 10 AM for a live show. So thanks for watching. Now get back to work.